Hi folks, this is Nathan with Two Guys in a Ride, and today I'm, we are in the 2021 Nissan Sentra, this is the SR trim level. Today I'll be covering the driver's information and infotainment screens. I'll do a general overview, show you how to access information, and do a deep dive. Let's get started. Today we're working with our friends at Mankato Nissan in Mankato, Minnesota. Okay, so on the driver's information screen, uh, over on the left, you've got an analog RPM gauge with an engine temperature gauge in the bottom, and then over on the far right, you've got an analog speedometer with miles per hour on the outside, kilometers on the inside, and then a fuel gauge. Um, so, uh, in the middle, we have a seven inch uh, digital uh, configurable screen. So, to uh, configure that, you're gonna use the uh, buttons on the left side of the steering wheel. You have four arrows and then you have got uh, a back button so it's really simply laid out um, once you press either the left or right button a menu will show up at the bottom and you can see the house and the flower and the eye and all those icons those are your main pages anytime there's more information you'll see little dots to the right of the screen so for this particular screen this is called the home screen and so I've got a digital speedometer here along with my media at the bottom of that. If I go down one, I get the media disappears and I get my, my speed, my digital speedometer, and then my average miles per hour. And then I can press and hold that to reset that. If I want to reset the average. One more screen gives me basically a calm screen. Okay, I'm gonna go more one more to the right. This is uh, just a fuel economy, so you can see your average miles per gallon there. You get a bar graph and you get a digital readout as well, and you can press and hold OK to reset that. If I go over one more to the right, this is just your uh, tire pressure right here. Um, it, I, I really like the way uh, that's displayed. I do have a few more options in this uh, screen, so I'm gonna press the down arrow. And here I get basically a trip meter. So uh, you get a timer and then you get your, uh, your odometer. If I go down one more, you have speed limit sign recognition, and that's if we're on and driving, that's where that screen will show up. Okay, and then if I click one more, we're just back to the top. Now, I'm gonna go over one more to the right. Here, you have media. So, uh, in order to change presets, I would use these two buttons down here, and I can just go through here and I can hit the different presets. If I wanna go to the sources, I press OK, and then I can scroll through and, and select a source, Okay. and then I can just click OK. And there it switches. All right, uh, So, the, but there's nothing else on that screen. That's just media. I'm gonna go one more to the right. Here you have uh, some of your driver safety systems. So you do have your adaptive cruise control here. That is over on the right side of the steering wheel here. Uh, you've got the on and off button here and then resume, set, cancel. And then you have a gap setting button that is right here. So, there are some more screens in this, but we need to go over back to the left side of the steering wheel for that. And if I go down one, here you get some of your safety systems here. And if I press OK, it's going to pull up these three things, lane, blind spot, and emergency brake. And on any one of them, if you click the OK button, you basically get sort of a on or off right there that you can turn. And if you turn it off, by the way, and I go back, and I go back again, you can now see that the lane departure is off. All right, I'm gonna go across, go back and turn that on because I don't want to leave that. I would always have that on. There we go. Click back. And then you have the same thing for blind spot and emergency brake. It works the same way. All right, I'm gonna hit the back button here again. And I'm gonna go down one more. And then we're back to your uh, uh, driver uh, assist systems, this cruise control and lane keeping assist and that kind of stuff. So. Now I'm gonna go over one more to the right. All right, under settings, the last uh, tab at the bottom of the screen, here's where you have a lot of stuff that you can configure. There's just, there's uh, basically two pages worth of information. So I'm not gonna go through all of these, but we're gonna go through some of them. And we're gonna start with driver assistance. So I just go on, highlight it, click okay. Now you have the three that we had earlier but you also have speed limit sign. You can turn that on or off. Now, I don't know if it's coming across on camera well, but the little dot next to on is orange when it's on and it's white when it's off. I kind of wish it would just say off, but 
that's that's the way it is. Um, parking aids right here. If I click on those, you can have the um, sonar show up auto, uh, and then you can do the rear parking sensors on or off. And then you can set the distance that you want them to, to be at. Do you want them to be at a sense at a long distance, a medium distance, or short? Uh, basically, if you set it for long, it's going to pick up things well before you get to them, and short will pick them up only, uh, you know, seconds before you get to them. So that depends on your preferences. I'm going to hit the back button, and then you can set the volume that, that chimes at you, high, medium, or low. Just select it, and then press OK. Hit the back button here twice. All right, rear cross traffic. This is a simple on or off with the push of a button. If I go down here, I can get driver attention alert. That's just, you know, if you're kind of weaving in and out of the lanes or whatever, uh, if it senses you maybe need a rest, it'll, if that's on, it'll pop up and tell you to take a break. You do have a timer alert. Now, the timer alert is not for anything specific. It's just an, a timer for you. So if you want to say, well, in 25 minutes, I need to pull over and make a phone call, you can set a timer. You can also reset the timer by clicking down and clicking OK. Hit the back button here. If you want a low temperature alert, basically when the car system senses it's going to be it's down to 32 degrees or lower, it gives you a little um, warning that it, the temperature is low. And you can see that up on the screen above where it's 31 degrees Fahrenheit. It's got a little blue star. If I click this, the blue star disappears. Still gives you the temperature, but you do get the little nice little icon to help warn you when you get in that it's kind of cold, might be slippery. Vehicle settings. Here we've got several things. We've got lighting, so you can have a welcome a headlight on or off, auto room lamp on or off, and a light off delay. And you can set that uh, anywhere from zero seconds all the way up to probably about 180, yep, 180 seconds. Okay, I'm going to hit back twice. Okay, let's, uh, let's go down and look at wipers for a minute here. You do have speed-dependent wipers in this vehicle, so you can have those on or off. Basically, the, fast, the more rain it senses, it, the faster it'll wipe. And if it doesn't sense much, it'll wipe slower. And then if you want a rear door alert in case that door is not completely latched, you can turn that on here. And you can have it off, horn, and alert, or alert only. I'm going to hit the back button, hit the back button again. All right, down to the second page. So under maintenance, you have a couple things. You have oil control system here. Um, it basically just tells you when, it, when it's uh, due for service, and then you can press and hold that to reset it. You can uh, set a mileage marker for oil and filter, like if I press OK, I can now enter a number of miles just by pressing the arrows and then uh, it'll remind me at that many miles to change my oil and filter. And you have the same thing for tire, and then you have the same thing under other, and that could be anything that you want. So it's nice to leave one in there that, that you can just do for your own. Now, under customized display, this has to do the, with the display that we're looking at, the digital display. There are a few things that you can do. So under main menu selection, there are a couple of screens that you can turn off. And now we've we've seen all of these screens. You got the home here, you got just the speed, you got the calm screen, and then when we flipped over, we saw the fuel economy, eco pedal guide, and so on. These are just all screens that we were able to look at. Now, on any one of these, if you would like to turn them off, you just click the OK button. I click the OK button and I can turn them back on again. All right, what happens then is if I go back to home, so I'm just going to use my left arrow, I'm going to go all the way back to the home icon, and so some of those screens are here that we, that we looked at that you can turn on or off. Like, for instance, you can turn this one off, and then you would just have this one and the calm screen. But the next one we looked at was fuel economy. If you turn that off, that little leaf and this screen won't appear. So the screens are kind of spread out throughout all of these icons, um, but it does give you um, all of them and you can decide which ones you want on and which ones you want off. Okay, you can have cruise screen tra transition on or off with a simple click. Uh, yeah, with the welcome effect, you can have the gauge, uh, gauges on or off and the uh, animation on or off. Um, 
and then light wiper guidance on or off and the wiper mode guidance on or off. Go back here, unit and language. Here you can uh, adjust, for instance, mileage and fuel. If I click on it, you can have these following selections. Hit the back button. Tire pressure and temperature are separate. So tire pressure, you could set to any one of the four. We saw that earlier. And then, of course, you have Fahrenheit and Celsius for temperature, and it just changes it right there. And then you can go down here and change the language if you want. Okay, I inadvertently hit the back button, but I think you get the picture. If you in case you completely mess up, you can hit the factory reset button. Okay, I'm going to go one more to the right. And that is it for the driver's information screen. Next, we're going to move over to the infotainment screen. Okay, so over on the infotainment screen, we have an 8-inch screen. And it is touch, but there are some physical buttons. So down below, you do have a button where you can get the brightness. And then probably the easiest way is just to, when you press it, kind of reach over here before it disappears and scroll and you can change the brightness of the screen. You can also use plus and minus. You do have, um, this, is, this is not a favorite button, but this is like a scan or seek button forward and seek backwards for the radio. You do have an audio button that brings you to this screen right here. Depends on it. a couple different pushes. This is Apple CarPlay. Push it again and I'm back to here. And we'll get back to that in a minute. You got a main menu button that brings you back to this screen. And there are three different screens here and I'll get back to that in a little bit. You do have a dedicated phone button right here, but it's gonna bring me to Apple CarPlay because I'm not using Bluetooth right now. I'm connected via cable and I'm using Apple CarPlay. If you had Bluetooth, this would bring up the phone. Okay, you do have a camera button here, and that allows you to either turn the predictive course uh, guidelines on or off, and then go over here to dis the display settings. So it's really nice because then I can adjust the brightness, the contrast, the tint, the color, and the black level all by using these little arrows. It, it's not a slide, and it isn't on any graph that looks like this. It's always going to be the buttons, the plus and minus buttons. But that's a really nice feature. I'll just put it in reverse quick here so you can see the backup camera. And there are the dynamic swivel guidelines as well as the fixed measurement. Each one of these uh, colors is a different measurement, uh, letting you know how close you are to something. So take a little time, look in your own manual, and figure out what those distances are, and that should help you uh, uh, when you're backing up. All right, and then you, of course, have a back button right here. And then you have a push for power, and uh, that, that basically just shuts the audio off. Turn on again, and then you have a rot rotary for volume, and then over here you have a tune and scroll and a push for sound. So if I want to adjust the sound settings in here, I just a simple push, and then I can adjust the bass, the mid, the treble, and then the balance, and then the fade. So really nice that they give you that. And then of course, um, this can tune and scroll for uh, your screens. And then if you are in the radio, it'll do uh, radio, radio channels. Okay, well let's get back to the screen for a minute. All right, so let's just start with Apple CarPlay since that's the first icon up. Now, I already went and connected my phone with a USB-C cable. You have a USB-C and a USB-A. Both will work for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. This happens to be uh, Apple CarPlay. Um, if, you've not, if you're new to Apple CarPlay, it's awesome. Think of it as Bluetooth, but on steroids. So basically, it takes every app on your phone and puts it up in the screen for you. So now you can run your phone from here. You can also use Siri or Google Assistant through your phone. If you use the voice command button on the steering wheel, you can just click and hold. You have to, you have to push and hold it and hold it for a little bit. Siri, open Google Maps. All right, so, I mean, that, that is just way, 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 way cool. Now, uh, if I push this button here, I'm gonna see all of the apps that I can use on Apple CarPlay. But basically, um, I've got, if you look here, I've got Google Maps, I've got Apple Maps, and I have Waze, along with several music things, Amazon Music, Pandora, that kind of stuff. Um, 
So uh, that's, it's just so nice. These three icons are your most recently used ones. And, and one of the really nice things I think is that when you get a text message, it, 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 you'll see the notifications. And if you click, just click on it, you can do everything through voice command. You can hear the message, you can respond, it'll read it back to you, it'll ask you if you want to, uh, if that's the response you want to send. But it all can be done uh, pretty much after you get the process started without touching anything. See, now I've got a message right now. So I'm going to click up here. Robert Edwards said I'm in the back seat. Would you like to reply? Yes. What do you want to say? I'm in the front seat. Your reply to Robert Edwards says I'm in the front seat. Ready to send it? Yes. Okay, it's sent. And it's that simple. So, I mean, that that is just really nice. Um, but if you never tried Apple CarPlay, I'd, I'd suggest well worth plugging your phone in. Besides, your phone will charge while it's plugged in. The nice thing is you never have to reach down to your phone. Okay, if I go back here, I'll show you one more thing. You do get a split screen. Um, I had Google Maps running, that's why that's showing up. If you had Apple Maps that was running last, that would be there, or Waze. You have uh, navigation commands here. You can do it by voice, and then you have your media. So just really, really nice. And of course, if you want to get back to the car system, you just press the menu. So let's go to audio. All right, so it brought me right back to Apple CarPlay, and I think it did that because that's the last audio source I used. You can see, um, Pandora plane right there. If I click audio again though, now it brings me to my thing. So I, let's say I want to go to Sirius XM. See, just click on it. So Sirius XM, AM, and FM radio all are set up the same way. So I'm going to show how to use Sirius XM, but then you can use that same process to you do FM or AM. Here's how it works. You want to uh, save a station. You just you know, you can click anywhere. I'm going to go uh, down here. I got several dots. So let's see if I can go all the way to the end and find a blank one. Okay. Ooh, I got all 36 are filled. So I'm not going to get any more than that. So I'll overwrite something. And there I go. It's just a click and hold. All right. Uh, I showed you how to how to do the sound, right? So you can go up there and change, change the different uh, balance and fade and that kind of stuff. I can click up here again and see all the sources. I can look at a Sirius XM menu, and I won't go through all these, but you get a channel list, direct tune. Uh, you can scroll through here. Lots of things you can do. All right. Um, there is a weather report, but you got to enter your traffic and city. Okay. And then right here, you can get a sports flash. Um, you just got to define the team and you have to set that up. So those are kind of some cool features. All right. Uh, you also get a settings button right here. So if I click on that and go straight to sound, now I get a few more options. And for instance, I get the bass enhancer on or off. And then if I go down here, I can set the speed sensitive volume by using the plus or minus. Basically, the faster you go, the louder the car, the stereo gets, and the slower you go, the, uh, the lower it gets. The idea is to keep the sound sounding the same volume all the time. Okay, but you may need to change that sensitivity. Okay, now I'm going to quickly show you um, FM. It's going to look pretty much the same. See, source menu, same kind of setup right here. Still got your settings button there. If I go to AM, you're going to see the same thing. And that's what I really like about modern uh, infotainment systems. They're just set up to, to operate fairly simply. Once you learn one thing, you can apply that to other areas. All right, I'm going to go back to the home button for a minute. And I'm going to go to connections. Now under here, um, Bluetooth. Now I'm connected via cable, remember. So if I was connected via Bluetooth, it would show up right here. Right? If you have a USB device connected, you can see that right here. And then if you click under apps, you can see right now it's just my phone. All right, so I'm gonna go back for a minute. Um, info. All right, so I have uh, two things here, but let's concentrate on system information here for a second. We've got version information if you need that. You have SXM or SiriusXM 
information there. And that's the kind of stuff that, you know, if you want to reactivate an account, they're going to want to know what was on there. And that's where you find all that kind of information. Okay, most of that stuff you'll, you'll, you'll never touch. Apple CarPlay under Apps, if I click on it, it just takes me right to Apple CarPlay. That was info, so let's take a look here at settings for a minute. All right, we've already looked at connections. Phone is grayed out because I'm not connected via Bluetooth. I showed you sound. Here we have volumes and beeps. The car does a lot of beeping at you when, for different reasons. Okay, so you can have some, turn some of those off, especially the buttons on the infotainment. Um, you can set the audio volume minimum. Um, I'd, I'd leave that at zero, otherwise every time you start get in and start your car, the radio is going to come on um, and with volume. But if you like that, you can set that ringtone volume. You can set that right there for your phone. If you have an outgoing uh, call, you can adjust that at that time. Um, and then, of course, I showed you that one. I'm going to go back here. Um, let's see, clock. Here's another spot to uh, change the clock. You got a, a few different options under here. You got a date format that you can click. And then of course you can set the clock manually. Hit back again. I could also be using this back button here too. Customize home menu. All right. So this screen here, I'm gonna show you something in a minute. It's the same thing you get if you go and you swipe to the, to the right here and hit customize home screen. Okay, basically for your home screen, you have three options. You can have four little squares and a big one. You can have two little squares on either side and a big one, or you can have up to eight icons on the screen. Okay. So if I go to this one here, for instance, that, that's the one that's currently on my screen. I'll show you that one real quick. That's this one. So I got a big screen and a little one. Let's say I want to change that particular one. All right. So I'm going to go into settings. I'm going to go to customize home menu. Hit OK. And what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to leave this format, but I'm going to change it a little bit. For instance, I want phone to be here. Let's see if I can move it. There we go. All right. And let's say that I want, um, I've already got audio, so I want a clock, but I want that over in the far, oops. Let's see. Ah, it changed the whole format because the clock is bigger. Okay. Um, I'm going to go back and I, I'm going to change that in a minute. I'm, I'm going to go back to the audio for a minute. I think if I, there, I, I can do audio that size. There we go. So, I mean, depending on what you drag in and, and you kind of have to just try it out, but there are different sizes, so they'll fit different ways. Let me just keep going here quick. I'm going to put Sirius XM down here. I'm going to put uh, FM down here and I'm going to put Bluetooth here. Um, and I don't really use auxiliary, but I might want my phone book access real quick and I might want to see my call history. Okay. Now, if I go to menu, I should have this. Yep, there I go. So you can customize audio sources uh, as to far as what you're using and what order they're in. But there are always going to be five icons. You, you, you can't get rid of some of them. And where this shows up is in your, like your radio screen. So let's say, for instance, I want Apple CarPlay to be first. So I've already got it in here, so I'm going to drag it over. I want Sirius XM next. I want FM next. And then the rest I don't care about, but something has to be there, so I'm just going to leave that. Now if I go back to menu, all right, so I'm going to go to audio, and there, Apple CarPlay, Sirius XM, FM, AM, and USB. So now I've got the sources. Instead of going up here to click, I can now just click on them up here. Now, putting Apple CarPlay there is a little redundant because they always keep Apple CarPlay there, and settings is always there. You can't change those two, so it's a little redundant. But you get the idea. But this is where it's going to show up. So don't get confused if you if you like if you go to audio and you look at source, and you're like, well, that's not the order I put them in. That shows up once you're in the radio. Okay, and, it, and it doesn't matter if I go to Sirius XM, see, they all still stay there. So that's where that uh, customization comes in. 
All right, system voice. This is for your voice command. You can go in there, initial voice prompts, short voice prompts, best match lists. Um, and, and I would leave, um, you know, I would turn both of those on, in fact. You can change your voice preference from female to male. Um, now, you can change the speech rate. You can increase it or decrease Sample. it. Sample. 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 So, minute differences in the speech rate. And that's it on this screen. All right, if I go over here, I get the camera. And this is what I had before from the camera button. I can look at others. Now, here I can look at the change the language if I want. I can look at the display. And again, this is. Um, the same thing we found when we, um, we went under camera, but this is for your actual whole infotainment screen. So if I click this, you can see it getting a little bit dimmer and a little bit brighter. Okay. You contrast and black level. So depending on how you, uh, how you see your screen with your eyesight, you've got some adjustments you can make. Another spot to change units. We saw that in the driver's information screen. You can have a keyboard type if you want, or you can return all of the settings to default. Okay. Then I'm going to come back here and want to show you one thing. Now, this particular car does not have navigation on it. So with Apple CarPlay, you have automatic navigation. So I'm going to push and hold the, uh, the, the voice command button on the right side of the steering wheel, and I'm going to ask Siri to plug in an address for me, a location. Siri, use Google Maps to navigate to McDonald's. Here's what I found. All right. I'm going to click this one. Getting directions to McDonald's using Google Maps. And there you go. I mean, so just really, really nice. Now, if I hit start, Head west on 216th Street, Madison Avenue. Okay, there it is. Okay, if I tap on the screen, I can hit exit, and it takes me out of the route. So, I mean, e even though the vehicle doesn't have navigation, I mean, using Apple CarPlay to do that is so simple because you still can do it through the voice command, so still kind of a hands-off operation. Okay. That is it on the um, infotainment screen and the driver's information screen. I hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching.